<laughs> Hiya troopers, welcome to Food for Thought, a show where I get my PhD on things that absolutely no one asked for. I'm sure you've seen tons of videos explaining the Mandela effect over the years, and it seems that particularly in the last year, it just exploded in popularity, probably because we've all been locked out and throwing conspiracies in our brain. You know, I myself love a good session about wondering whether that, that tuba basket and the Fruit of the Loom logo was actually in the logo or not, or whether it's something we all collectively made up. Now, the human memory isn't perfect, right? Sometimes I can't remember what I had for breakfast that same morning. There's a reason why they don't solely rely on witness testimonies when they're doing legal investigations. And even when you're recalling old times out of nostalgia, you can't help but wonder if things were actually better when you were a kid, or if it's just your memory giving you an idealized version of the past. But one thing's for sure, when it comes to a certain thing from our childhood, specifically crayons, there's always been one thing or rather one company that's always stood king, and that's our good friends at Crayola. Now, when I was growing up, most notably out of all the alternative crayon brands that everyone would bring up as being definitely nowhere near as good as Crayola, were our good friends at Roseart. I definitely remember when I was growing up, there was a couple of times where I ended up having to use Roseart crayons instead of Crayola ones, and it definitely wasn't a very fun time. Even to this day, I still think that Crayola is definitely the better option in regards to crayons. But sometimes I can't help but wonder if there's not some sort of weird uh, offshoot Mandela effect going on where these things really weren't as bad as we remember them being, but maybe because of all the memes and just uh, shared childhood memories, we're all just sort of remembering them to be a lot worse than they actually were. See, these are the questions that keep me and a five-year-old up at night, except the five-year-old gets to bed on time. Crayola is so synonymous with being the best in its field that you can think about it like this. Even though we call all tissues Kleenex, Kleenex itself still has competition, and even in some cases it's not arguably the best brand for that. If you get a boo-boo, you'll ask for a band-aid and not care too much about the brand, unless it's one of those cheaper ones that fly right off or it has the wrong cartoon characters on the band-aid. I grew up in a Hispanic household, and we would call our crayons Crayolas, or Crayolas which is literally just Crayola and plural because they were just so synonymous with being what you get for crayons. I know this video is going to get into a ton of anecdotal territory here, but if you look across dozens of discussions online and even when you talk amongst your own friends, I'm sure you've heard the supposed horrors of using alternative crayon brands that aren't Crayola. How much your kid will hate you if you cheap out and get the brand that isn't the best for drawing. Right now we are in pandemic times and I don't think that even though I could just drive to the damn factory in Irvine, I really thought they'd give me a tour right now. They'd probably think I'm some sort of Crayola spy or something. So I think I'll start off with a quick history of the Roseart company. Roseart started as a family run company in New York and they basically made puzzles and toys and things like that. They ended up having to relocate to New Jersey because a fire literally destroyed all of their factories and warehouses. And it really is a simple history. I mean, they also ended up joining the crayon manufacturing craze once Crayola crayons started really catching on. Notably, there was some drama involved when traces of asbestos were reportedly found in crayons across various companies. They ended up removing talc as an ingredient from their crayons and were actually pretty proud of the fact. Even though it's a family-run business, the president of Rosart at the time, Larry Rosen, actually left the company in 2006. He left to get involved with the fundraising and candy industry, but his passion for the toy and creativity industry led to him starting his own company in 2008, a company called Crazy Art. So believe it or not, there's actually an offshoot of Rose Art crayons called Crazy Art, and you can actually still find these in stores today. The company formerly known as Rose Art Industries is now actually owned by a bigger corporation called Mega Brands America. Fun fact, Mega Brands America also owned Mega Blocks. So I'll leave the jokes to you that Crayola is like the Lego of crayons, whereas Mega Brands America is, well, the mega blocks of crayons, quite literally. So obviously the easiest way to find out if there really is a difference between the different brands of crayons is to find out how they're made. The concept of an artistic tool made out of wax has been around for literally thousands of years. We've seen paintings made with pigmented hot wax, which was typically a type of beeswax. And even after that, early forms of the modern crayon were made with things such as different oils, charcoals or other pigmented materials and in some cases there was even processes that involved clay or chalk 
And actually, the word Crayola was put together by the wife of Edwin Binney, who was one of the people in charge of the company at the time. I'll probably pronounce this very incorrectly, but Miss Alice Stead Binney took the French words Cray, which stands for chalk in English, and oleaginous, which stands for oily. And when you combine the two, Cray and oleaginous, Cray, Oli, you get the word Crayola. Now, while Crayola was very cool and they didn't patent the process to make crayons, they do sort of keep the process to get the exact colors and shade and everything to themselves. It's a well-guarded secret, but we do know a couple of things. The pigments are typically produced from natural sources. They start off as powders, but then they're pounded, ground up, sieved, and then they're refined and heated. Obviously, the amount of powder in the color determines the shade, but also the temperature that the wax was heated to affected the color of the crayon. Like I said earlier, they used to add talc as an ingredient in crayons, and it's sort of like when you add flour while you're making a cake. It used to add this sort of interesting texture to the crayon. But to summarize, it really is just pigmented wax that's heated up and dumped into these cylinder molds. And once the cylinder molds have cooled off, you get that classic crayon shape, slap on a label with a cool color name, and you have the crayons that you know today. Given that it's actually a pretty simple process to make a crayon, you really wouldn't think that there's that much of a difference in quality between the different brands. Obviously, when it comes to colors and shades, in my opinion, there's definitely a big difference, leaps and bounds for Crayola, because they've been at it for so long that they have that down to a science. So once I learned how they were actually made, I figured it was time to put it to the test myself. After all, they're all just crayons being made in the same manner. There can't be that much of a difference, can there? So here are our coloring pages. We have this lovely picture of Chucky and our friend Billy Bob from the Animatronics Band. And we're gonna be testing out the Rose Art crayons first. So here we go. I'll try to give updates throughout. So here's where we're at so far. Uh, honestly, it's not, they're not bad. I guess they are a little waxy, but they are, they're crayons. I mean, it does feel, I guess, a little funky. I have to see, I don't know, I haven't used crayons in years, but I mean, they're fu they're fine. They're, they're crayons, so far so good. All right, so here we go. If I had to nitpick, a lot of these wrappers are really ugly. Like they seem that they're gonna fall apart any second, but the crayon seems sturdy enough. I mean, they're waxy, but all crayons are, they're not oily. I guess the colors are a little, just not as impressive. Here's their finished drawing right here. But I mean, they're crayons. So far, yeah, I, I mean, so far I'm not buying the Rose Art is like the worst thing to ever happen to crayons type of myth. But um, yeah, if I had to nitpick those thingies, the names aren't that impressive. The colors aren't that vibrant in my opinion maybe they will be a lot more vibrant than the other options but so far they're fine so here's rose art i mean i i don't know maybe they used to be a lot worse before than they are now maybe modern rose art isn't that bad so if you can find them i would say go ahead they're an acceptable option up next we're going to be trying actually these crazy art crayons so these are the offshoot a former president of Rose Art went ahead and started this company and he made these crayons so we'll have to see if they're any different maybe he learned a few things and we're going to be coloring this picture of Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance favorite show of my girlfriend Lindsay's so here we are I've decided to color in my my Big Ed blue we're almost done here but I mean so far it's it's fine new crayons I feel like they're definitely less waxy than the Rose Art one uh, smells a lot better, um, but they seem to color just as fine. I think they're maybe a little bit more vibrant, like you're able to kind of create nicer shades and stuff with them. But uh, so far it looks like you're good to go. It looks like you learned some lessons with this new company. So here's the finished drawing. So far I'm leaning towards one of two theories. Either everyone got better and making freaking crayons, but they all just have such bad publicity over the years that it's over <laughs> for the other brands but I mean they're fine I like this one definitely a lot better than the Rose Art ones it seems like he definitely figured out how to make them a lot nicer they definitely do blend a lot more nicely I'm trying to just blend some stuff here but yeah I mean I wouldn't cry go into like disaster mode 
over this box of crazy arts. These are fine and they're both boxes, only the rose art ones in this particular case because you can't find them anywhere. But this box was like a dollar less than Crayola ones and these, they're they're fine, they're usable. I don't see what the, what the whole crisis about the crayons were when we were kids, but I don't know. Maybe they got better at making them for all we know. So, so far these are better than rose art, but yeah, they're fine. Good crayons. Okay, so last up is a picture of me and my girlfriend. We're gonna go coloring book style on this one. And we got our big box of crayons. I actually might use uh, the smaller one, we'll have to see. Kind of bias, because this is 24, but so is the rose art one. So we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. So few things, first of all, presentation, I will say. Obviously ergonomics are very important and if you look good slash feel good when you use something you will perceive it as good and I think that's very important it actually does make the product better so yeah they're definitely king in this regard. I might be biased but I do think I like the color selection a lot more with these and they're definitely a lot less wax here. I can kind of see why people consider them waxy um or rather they consider the alternatives waxy but these bad boys yeah nowhere near as waxy as the other ones but the other ones color just fine i think people just prefer like the shades that they come up with with these smell test is a lot probably the best out of the three but i i can see why crayola is king but doesn't make the other ones any less usable all right and here is the finished drawing so I guess Crayola is definitely the best <laughs> out of the three for sure. There's no waxiness. Um, I felt like the other crayons were a little bit more crumbly, like they were easier to break. And I do like the colors for sure. I can't be sure if I'm biased or not on that point, but I did like the colors a lot more for sure. The options with the Crayola ones, they do blend a little bit nicer, but I guess Nowadays, maybe in the past it was the case, it's a little bit inconclusive, but nowadays if you just need cheaper crayons, I mean, unless you're getting your crayons from IHOP, uh, I think it's no big deal. I think these are just fine. These are good, all good crayons. But let's consider this case close. Crayola number one, but the other ones are cool too. So, here we go. Okay, so you're gonna also do the crayon test. We have the three crayons. We have uh, Crayola, the classic. Ta-da. We have Crazy Art, the, uh, the offshoot Rose Art Company. And then we have the classic bad guy. <laughs> Perfect hair flip. That way it's not just me. We have a, a test. What's what's the... That way we have a sample size of two people. So two is better than one. So we're gonna color each drawing with a different box of crayons and then we'll come back and tell you the results. So, so far Crazy Art is goo. And it broke. Okay. It was okay. I don't think it was terrible. Um... My hands feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're fine. <laughs> um, they're not the worst. If you buy these, you definitely love your kid. I think it colored great. They're but the yellow oh. kind of sucks. Okay, yellow sucks. And they did break. If I was a toddler, these would be destroyed. Mm. They were like a dollar less. I could literally crush them with my hand. By grip. Okay, next up is the rose art crayons. So these these are the ones that are the big bad. But they're also modern and I also wasted fifteen dollars just trying to get these, so. So take it in. Vintage. So uh, one more time, you like what? <laughs> this is orchid. I like orchid. Orchid's good. Orchid's good. We go. This is Rose Art. 
This is the rose art drawing. It's okay. The colors were kind of all similar, to be fair. There was 24. Which is the most out of all of them. These are 16. And this one kind of was okay, but it all looks the same. Do you like it more or less than the crazy art ones? I like it the same. You like it the I'm same? Sure. That's all I have to say about rose art. Cute picture, though. Fifteen dollars. Oh my god. <laughs> they are hard to find. You might as well just get crazy art. Then. I'd get crazy art. Here's the last drawing. It's Billy Bob and Chuck E. Cheese. Chunky e. Cheese. This is the classic. Green. I'd say smell them if you could, but you're wearing a mask. Ew. You get the classic Crayola smell. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the best part right there. And All the stupid <laughs> the sun. I was like zooming in like whoa, but the sun blocks it. Oh, sorry, it's just a new backpack. This is Crayola. My eyes fucking burn. From all the wind. The best part is right there, but you can't really see it. There's a bee, sorry. But Crayola is obviously the best. Look at these fucking vivid colors. Vivid. Vivid. Oh god, sorry. Party. This is Crayola. Sorry for the interruption. I'm going to deduct the uh, payment for a new lens. Anyways. Crayola the best. these pictures. Okay. <laughs> Crayola was the best in my opinion. Rank the three. What Crayola do you think? first. Uh-huh. Crazy Art second. Okay. Well, actually, no, no, sorry. Crayola first. Rose art second, and then crazy art. Mira, I, I think that's kind of how I went with it too. It's too bright outside. Oh, there you go. I kind of did it there. That's it. That's the best part. I love you too, though. Yay! So obviously we have one last test, which is the taste test, which I know is what you all came for. Me personally, I think of myself as a blue person, so we'll go ahead and get started with some blue. Now, I'm not a complete savage, right? I love me good crayon, but there's no way I'm eating that paper label. There's ink and all sorts of germs. You know, I don't know who's touched this crayon, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this, right? That way we can just get right to the, oh, it broke. Wow, well, we can get right to the creamy, waxy center. Oh. Almost forgot where are my manners. Okay, bon appetit. Here we go. Surprisingly, does not cut that well with a knife. All right. All right. We'll go ahead and give it to Crayola. Best crayon. Definitely win the taste category. 